Dennis Corpy here, bringing you your daily Bible blessing. Let's read again from John chapter 5, and we'll read verses 14 and 15. Afterwards, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, Behold, you have become well. Do not sin any more, so that nothing worse happens to you. The man went away and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had made him well. In the last video, we went over this amazing story of the paralytic who was healed by the Pool of Bethesda in Jerusalem in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you'll remember in the story, the man had been sick and had been waiting for a healing for 38 years. And then suddenly and immediately in the presence of Christ, his infirmity was made right. And because he was healed on the Sabbath day, this triggered a controversy between Jesus and the Jewish authorities. Now, when the miracle was performed and the Jews were looking into the matter, it says that Jesus slipped away. And now we catch up with the story and Jesus found the man in the temple and he had a message for him. And I think this is an important message for us too. Let's read it again, exactly what Jesus said. He said, behold, you have been made well. Do not sin anymore so that nothing worse happens to you. Jesus warned him about going back to a sinful lifestyle. And I wanna say a few words about this. What exactly did Jesus mean when he told him not to sin anymore? Was he implying that it was because of sins that he had ended up in that condition in the first place? Well, we're not sure about that. I don't want to say that it was because of his sins, his personal sins, that he ended up in that condition. But we do know this, that all the ruin and wretchedness and wickedness and corruption in this world is attributable to sin. And we can trace the fall of man right back to that early episode in the garden where man transgressed the direct command of God who told him not to eat of the fruit of the tree of knowing good and evil and gave him that prohibition and then a warning saying that in the hour that you shall eat thereof, you shall surely die. And of course, we know the story. The tempter came and said to them, did God really say? And the tempter planted in their mind that God was withholding some good thing from them. And so they took the word of the tempter over the word of God and humanity fell. So all sin and all ruin and all treachery in this world is attributable to sin. So Jesus warned the man, do not go back to sin or a worse thing may come upon you. And I wanna speak a little bit now about the deceitfulness of sin. And if we wanna gain that victory that we all need over sin, we need to pay close attention to this principle. When the devil entices anyone to sin, he never tells you or warns you of the consequences. He intends to deceive you. He intends to mislead you. And in Hebrews chapter three, verse 13, it warns us of being hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Mark that, the deceitfulness of sin. The devil never tells us or warns us of the consequences. Instead, he misleads us, telling us that it will bring us pleasure. It will bring us profit. It will bring us prominence and prestige. It will give us an elevated status in this world. And it will rid us of all the unnecessary restraints that God has placed upon us. But I want you to mark my words. Just take a walk around your neighborhood Take a walk in the city streets and look around you. And maybe you don't even have to go that far. Look at your own life. Is it not 
the sin that has taken hold in your life that has caused you so much misery and sorrow, so much trouble and stress? And wouldn't your life be made better if you could only rid yourself of these sinful habits and practices? And so when God warns us of the consequences of sin, it's because he loves us and wishes the best for us. It's not that he's withholding pleasure uh, from us. So please be aware that the tempter is deceitful and any movement towards sin that he implants in your heart is a movement of his deceitful words. And take heed to that and do not fall into that. So the devil warned, the, or the Lord warned the man, uh, do not sin anymore so that a worse thing does not happen to you. Now, does this mean that the man could live a sinless life? Is that what Jesus was saying? You must live a sinless life now? No, that, that may be the ideal, but as human beings, we're prone to sin. But what Jesus does require of us that we don't harden ourselves into sinful practices, that we don't justify our sins when we commit them, but that we confess them and seek forgiveness from them and seek grace to rid ourselves of the chains and bondage of sin. So this is our Bible blessing today. Christ is willing to forgive sins. He's willing to transform hearts so that we no longer desire sinful practices. He's willing to enlighten our minds so that we no longer seek pleasure in sin, but that we seek pleasure, our highest pleasure, in doing the will of God. So the man went away, the story tells us in verse 15, and told the Jews that it was Jesus who made him well. And did the Jews acknowledge Christ as a healer? Did they acknowledge the miracle? Did this open their hearts for further instruction when they knew that only a man of God could perform a miracle of this magnitude? Not at all. Their hearts were hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. They chose pride over truth. They tr chose idols over God. They chose deceit over truth. And it's sad to say, friends, most people fall under this tragic category. Is that the case with you? I hope it's not. Dennis Corkery today bringing you your daily Bible blessing.